Today, I want to talk about a way to begin thinking about or even talking about mental health. And there's two different concepts I want to introduce. One is thinking about mental health on a continuum. And the other is beginning to think about mental health in the same way that we think about or even talk about our physical health. And so let's talk about that part first. Let's talk about our physical health and even thinking and talking about our physical health on a continuum. So first, let's kind of start thinking about the um, seasonal or um, physical illnesses that happen maybe even during seasons or um, because of something that you were exposed to, right? So let's start on that end of the continuum where we're looking at these, these illnesses, these physical illnesses that maybe have a beginning, middle, and end. They don't feel great when you're in them, but they're, they're over with pretty quickly. So these might be examples of like the flu virus or a common cold. Um, it could be even like food poisoning or a knee injury, um, or, um, some other kind of like a stomach bug or virus. So again, there's kind of a, there's it's seasonal, it's occasional when it happens or when you're experiencing it, you feel awful. It doesn't feel good whatsoever. There's interventions you do to kind of help yourself feel better. And then there's an ending to it. And you're able to seemingly kind of go back and regain re-enter life as it was before you had that illness. So that's kind of one end of the continuum with our physical health. Now let's kind of think about or talk about the, the middle part of that continuum of our physical health, which might look like more chronic illnesses. So these could be things like an autoimmune disease um, or another chronic illness where you're having to actually do a lifestyle change. It might look like changing your diet as well as taking supplements or even medication. You're having to maybe see a specialist occasionally on top of your regular visits with your doctor. So there's a little bit more intervention that takes place maybe even on days that you are at your worst or the disease, this physical disease is at its highest, you need additional support even from friends or family um, because, um, because it really impacts your functioning and your ability to do life. Um, and it's chronic, right? So this is a, an illness or a disease that is going to be through your lifetime and you're learning how to manage it and manage your life around it from here forward, um, or learning how to live with it. Right. And then let's move to the kind of the more extreme end of the continuum with our physical health, which might be one of those, a diagnosis of something that could be terminal or it's chronic, but it's more intense. It has more extreme symptoms with it, or it even has the possibility of, um, death along with the diagnosis. So that might be something like what we're looking at, which is like a cancer or um, heart disease or diabetes, something where, again, it requires a big lifestyle change. There's more medication maybe that's involved, more support from family or community. There's more specialists that you're having to go to for intervention. It might even mean treatment stays for specific physical health interventions or even rehab that you have to do. Um, and so there's more that's involved and the intensity of the, the illness is even higher. So now I want to kind of switch gears and let's talk about mental health on a similar continuum. So we have this kind of seasonal, um, there's intervention that takes place, but it's kind of more short term. And then we're able to kind of re-enter in the way that we were living before. There's your more chronic Um involves lifestyle change, uh, different support systems need to be in place as well as maybe different specialists that are involved and then our extreme end. So I'm going to actually talk about this, um, and look at it through a continuum, um, on our screen. So if we look at this table here, 
uh, we kind of talked about those, the seasonal, circumstantial, chronic, and then chronic with life threatening, more extreme. Now let's look at that through the mental health lens. So if you kind of look at the bottom of this table, when we're thinking about mental health on that continuum, kind of our more seasonal might be like some people have literally seasonal, like through the winter months, feel more depressive symptoms. Um, and then sometimes we have circumstantial symptoms, like there's more circumstantial anxiety that comes up in response to a situation that's happening maybe at work or in a relationship or, um, or depression in response to a loss um, or a, a loss in relationship or a loss in job. So it's again, circumstantial. It can even come up in a long time along with a diagnosis that we were talking about earlier with the physical health. But again, the anxiety or depression symptoms are more life situational or even relational related. And so when the relationship gets better, those symptoms seem to go away. Also kind of in that more acute or seasonal circumstantial could be even like acute trauma symptoms. You've experienced a trauma. And so for a, a, a period of a couple of weeks or even up to a month or two, you could be experiencing symptoms that then seem to resolve or kind of go away. Um, and then acute grief. Now, grief is one of those which we're going to talk about in the chronic, but I would say there's acute grief symptoms that everybody experiences on right after the loss that are really intense, and then they seem to subside after time. And then we shift into that middle or moderate category on our continuum. And when we're talking about mental health, this could look like chronic anxiety, right? Or clinical depression, where this has been, a um, these symptoms have been present for a really long time. Um, and maybe even earlier in childhood or adolescence, and they've continued into adulthood. And when we're looking at this kind of category with, with mental illnesses, then we're looking at more intervention that's needed, right? Because if it's chronic, it's not that maybe the symptoms will ever go away, but part of our work is to learn how to manage those symptoms and what it looks like to, to be able to live with them, but them not be so extreme. And so that's what's kind of worked on in the treatment process. And it might even require for some people medication intervention here and more specialty care or more appointments and long-term care. Again, because we're working with like something that's more chronic and it, it may be with you for the rest of your life. And we're learning different tools and even lifestyle changes to be able to manage those symptoms. Also looking at involving support systems and family systems in relationship to the mental illness and talking about it from the same continuum that we do with the physical illness, oftentimes can help people begin to understand what we're um, and readjust kind of our expectations of what treatment's going to look like. And then we move to that more extreme end on the continuum with mental health is again, these are, these are diagnoses which vastly impact life. Um, and at times when someone is really triggered into, or in that diagnosis, that illness it can be life-threatening for them at times, especially in the case of suicidality. And so when we look at this more kind of extreme end of the continuum, we're looking at, again, something chronic. It requires more management, lifestyle change. It requires more people involved, more um, support involved in the managing of that, um, of that illness. And what I would offer is through the management, through medication management, treatment, um, using tools that are taught to be able to kind of manage the symptoms, people can often experience similar to what we see in the physical health continuum, a remission kind of phase. But that doesn't mean that we're just stopping kind of using our tools and we're stopping medication because all that has helped keep it in remission. And there, there's ongoing work that needs to be gone, done to kind of stay in that remission or, or, or and instead of 
uh, rather, and people can actually get triggered out of remission um, when they're in that kind of more extreme end because of life stressors, life circumstances um, that can, or going off of a medication that can trigger them back into the symptoms. And then we're back into a treatment process. And so I, what I wanted to do is we're, um, as we're kind of looking at the continuum is again, just begin to start to think about it on a continuum, set treatment expectations on a continuum, but also begin to relate it to how we can very easily talk about our physical health in that continuum. And what would it be like to begin to, to offer and talk about with others, our mental health again, along that continuum and be able to ask for the support that we need, or even um, family members or loved ones or communities offer support based on where someone is in the continuum. Hope this is helpful. And I just, I wish for you that you are able to relate to what we've talked about today, find something useful and be able to apply it to make our communities a better place.